Hello everybody, I'm Jess to the Planets. And listen, if you enjoy our videos on YouTube, you need to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss anything from Jess to the Planets ministry. So many people need to subscribe. They watch all the time, but they don't subscribe. So hit that subscription and hit that notification bell and guess what? You won't miss anything from our ministry and it's just a joy to be able to minister to you. Remember, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Bye-bye. So if you got your Bibles, would you turn with me to the book of 2 Kings? It's right past 1 Kings. It's in the Bible for you that have iPads or telephones, however you use, or how you get your scripture with all the technology that we got today. I love the word of God because every word, every word is God talking, yet he may be talking through someone. He's talking through this prophet Elisha. But in actuality, he's talking to you. See, in St. John 3, 16, he was talking to John when he wrote, For God so loved the world that he gave, but actually he's talking to us. When he wrote 3 John, he said, To my beloved friend Gaius. Now, in John's mind, he's talking to Gaius. In God's mind, he's talking to you. I want to establish that in your mind. See, so anytime you read anything, past, present, future, no matter, no matter what dispensation you're in, he's talking to you, a personal God. I am that I am. Do you see that? Spiritually, physically, financially, morally, whatever you may, when you read this thing, in anything, it's God saying it. Sometimes he's telling you to shout. Sometimes he gives you a warning, behold, look. Different things, and it would apply to the situations that you're going through in this day and hour. You see what you understand what I'm saying? I like Kathy's sermon, and I think she's doing a series on it. I will build my church. Notice he didn't Jesus say, I built my church. Seekers didn't have been over. I will build. It's a present thing. And it's a future thing. It's not a past thing. Past we said, I have built my church. No, he said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will build. In other words, present tense. I will build. Future tense. Do you see that? Do you understand? So it's not just back then. See, that's why. See, when intellectual activity takes over, they say, well, healing's not for today. When Jesus says specifically that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, you can ask with words, but not ask by faith. You can use words to ask God something, but you're not using faith. You're not mixing it. So what happens is people say, well, you see, sometimes he does, sometimes he don't. No, no, you use the right words. You didn't mix it with faith. That faith stuff don't work. No, it always works. You just didn't work it. Don't shout me down. Listen to me. This is just a, a, a prelude of what I'm about ready to go into. So I want you to see this. I'm giving people time to get on JDM.org or Facebook or whatever all that other stuff is, is that right? All the, whatever the platforms are. Or you can just be here. Now watch this. I want you to see this. So in actuality, think of God speaking to you in your situation. Because this girl's got a situation. She's in trouble. So think about maybe some trouble you're going through or been through or going to go through. You know, because you know it's coming. And God sent Jesse. I am your Elisha today. God speaking through me, just like he spoke through Elisha. You got that? That's not arrogance. That's not cocking. It's just the way it is. All right. 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead. That was Obadiah. That was the prophet that had died. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondsmen. Now, being around Elisha, he didn't know how to stay out of debt. See, you can be around all great ministries and be in debt of your eyeballs. Now, some people say, well, if you pay your notes every month, you're not in debt till." Yes, you are. Yes, you are. You paid it that day, but you know what? It's called compound. You ever heard of compound interest? 
Compound debt. That's what happens in credit cards. Compound debt. They call it interest. What it is is adding to your debt. You see what I'm saying? So Obadiah didn't learn that. Now, Elisha was a powerful man of God, but he missed it on his servant Gehazi. Not at the beginning, but Gehazi began to change. Watch this. And Elisha didn't get it till at the end because he took him with him. Those things can happen no matter who they are what, or who you are. You see, that's why you need to go to uh, St. John, or uh, not St. John, uh, 1 John chapter 4, and try ye the spirits, whether they be of God or of the flesh. Whether you're prophesying, talking, or if you hear a voice, what is that voice? And you'll hit it every time. You won't miss, you'll hit it every time. Because you see, there's some things Satan can't do. But God said, I can do all things. So you can do things he can't do. Yes, Lord. All right. You are actually more powerful than the devil when you was a sinner. You shut the devil down as a sinner. Well, what do you mean? How many times before you was born again, you might have got drunk and you were running around with women or vice versa, whatever, doing dope, whatever you want to do. And you, man, you, and they knew it every night, boom, boom. All of a sudden, man, they, they say, get out there and let's do it. And you go, no, I ain't doing that. I'm too tired. I'm going home. I'm just going to go to bed. You shut the devil down when you was a sinner. He's trying to get you to send some more. You go, I ain't sending today. That's how powerful you are in the flesh. How much more are you in the spirit? But if your spirit's dead, you got nothing. Oh, you understand that? So if you can shut the, down, shut the devil down as a sinner, don't you think you can shut him down as a Christian? Okay, verse 2. This is where the Lord gave it to me. And Elisha said unto her, what shall I do for thee? I'm going to stop right there. That's what hit me. When I read that, all of a sudden, I'm facing God, and he says, Jesse, what shall I do for thee? I started telling him how much he's done. He didn't ask me that. He asked me, what shall I do for thee? I said, Lord, I just want to thank you for all you. I didn't ask you that. I know what I've done for you. What shall I do for you? God is a present God and a future God. We always dealing with the past. I sure thank you, Lord, for blessing me, you know. And Whoa, great, good, hallelujah, amen. Now, what shall I do for thee? I have a daughter named Jody. Jody's just a, well, she's my, she's my legacy. She's everything, Jody. And she gave me Meredith, which is a, a granddaughter. But I'm always telling Jody, that, Jody, what do you want? Jody, what do you want? Dad, dad, you do so much with it. You've done it all the time. I know what I did. You ain't got to remind me of what, I know what I've done. Jody, what do you want? What, what can I do for you? Oh, dad, you <laughs> You don't need to tell me any of that. What shall I do for you? I keep telling her that. Oh, dad. Oh, dad. I, mean, I said, what are you all dad me for? Watch this. Tell me to do something. When are you going to tell God what to do and not feel bad about it? Oh, this is going to be good. I think I'm going to buy this tape myself. All right. He said, what shall I do for thee? Then he asked, what do you have in your house? Because God can't do nothing for you without a seed. A word is a seed. All seed has great value. Very, all seed is very valuable. It's the reason why sometimes it doesn't work, it's in the wrong soil. But the seed has that power to just multiply. What shall I do for thee? I want to start right. I want you to stop right there. Now, I'm not going to deal with the rest of the oil and all that kind of stuff. It's just, and I want you to think, what do you want God to do in every area? One time, Elisha said, oh, God, a double portion of your anointing. What did Elijah say? Yeah, it's a hard thing, Elisha. Why? That's discipline. That's dedication. That's commitment, what you're asking for. You see what I'm saying? 
one time, and I'm going to write on this. I I'm doing 12 letters on this theme for 2021. If you're a partner, and if you're not a partner, you need to become a partner in this mission. It's not about the money. You need to get the letters because I could actually do a book on it. And I'm going to different scenes where Jesus says, what shall I do for you? What? And it don't make no difference how impossible it is. He's just asking you to ask. He's not asking you, like, like he told me that in 1978 right there by the Lafayette Airport. I'm going to give you a jet, 1978. I couldn't even fill up a Toyota. Gas cost 58 cents a gallon in 1978, ladies and gentlemen. I couldn't fill up a Toyota. Got a small gas tank. It blew my mind until he said this. I didn't ask you to pay for it. I asked you to believe for it. See, you think you got to pay for it. That's not your job. If you believe for it, you more than pay for it. It just becomes natural. It's, it's, so, it's so easy that you don't even think twice about it. One of the girls that works for me in my evangelism is Gina. Well, Gina, lift your hand up, Gina. Gina and Bobby over there. Now, why is it? Gina says, you, you just, I like Gina. She goes, wow. <laughs> they got that little twang, wow. You know, boss, you just make it so, you make it sound so simple, so easy. It is. It's called childlike. It's not called childish. Childlike. You see. Okay. Write this down. Here's your first point. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. What shall I do for thee? Oh, he just, he couldn't give me a million dollars. Yeah, he could. He couldn't give me a bit. Yeah, he can. He couldn't give me a trillion. Yes, he can. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. What's limiting it? You need to unlearn some things. You need to unlearn some religiosity that's been told you all your life. You need to unlearn some things doctors have told you concerning your body. Because medicine is not a science. It's a shot in the dark. They're practicing. Figure that out. And you are the guinea pig. I love doctors. I believe in doctors. Don't misunderstand me. Your, your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. So with all this stuff going on in our nation, I could care less. Not that I don't love my nation. I love my nation. I would die for this nation. I, I believe in the Pledge of Allegiance. I do. Strongly. But I know that they're not guiding me. How do you know that? How be it when the spirit of truth has come? Has he come? What's his name? The comforter. Why are you mad at me? Because I'm in comfort. I'm just doing what he says. How be it when the spirit of truth has come? He guides you in how much truth? How much truth? How much? All. Do you find any truth in Washington, D.C.? That's the pit of organized crime. Don't shout me down with a preaching good. It is. It's called a swamp. Your blessing is limited by your capacity to receive. So don't get mad at me if my blessing is overflowing. Why? Because I got rid of my capacity to receive by unlearning religiosity. Now when God says, what shall I do for thee? Whoa, Jesus. And the time factor ain't got anything to do with it neither. I don't care how long it takes. Now, who don't want it yesterday? Well, we the ones came up with fast food. America came up with that. Watch this. Write this point down. Your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. Your blessings are often tied to what you want, not need. I never ask God for need. I never will because he'll supply how many need? How many need? How many need? What are you spending your spiritual energy on need when he said he'll supply all your need according to his riches and glory? When are we going to believe what this book says instead of some theologian, somebody's experience and all that craziness? Your blessings 
are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to, to declare. What are you willing to declare? Let me tell you what I'm willing to declare. Isaiah 119. If you be willing <laughs> and obedient, you eat the good of the land. You can't eat nothing if you're not willing, if you're not obedient. See, your blessings are often tied to what you want, not need. Forget that. Get away from that crazy need stuff. I'm dealing with your desire. I'm dealing with what you want. I don't want to give my daughter what she needs. Your husband don't want to give you what you need. That's a washing machine. That's a vacuum cleaner, and that's good stuff. But you want something you can wear. It'd be kind of hard to wear that washing machine. You might want a piece of jewelry or a Louis Vuitton purse or a little higher, Chanel or Givenchy or Gucci or Escada. That's not tongues. That's real stuff. <laughs> so I have lost all capacity to not receive. There's a vast difference between receiving and taking. I don't take nothing. I receive things. Taking has a kind of a, an aura to it, like, you owe me this, so I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. But when you receive, ooh. But you got to get rid of that limited capacity. And then you have to say, Lord, this is what I want. He's saying it like the song. Tell me something good. Mm -mm. Tell me, tell me. Well, I'm going to tell him something good. You see. If you be, I said, when I, if you be willing and obedient. Okay, let me just get on something natural, what the church would call flesh greed when it's not. It's called money. How many of y'all want some money? Don't lie. Lift your hand up. You need some. Come on. Sure, you live in an economic world. Why is that a problem? Now, God didn't tell you to fall in love with it, did he? He didn't tell you that it was your source. He didn't tell you that it was your security. But he put you in an economic world. So money, not a bad thing. Because the clothes you wear, you either stole it or you paid for it. Right? Right? And they want you to have your clothes so much, they put it on sale. So you don't have to use as much of your money. They're actually doing you a favor. I thought when the malls closed because of the COVID, I would save money, but Kathy found another way. It's called online shopping. Do you know that Dillard's and Nordstrom's lives at my house? She just orders this, orders that, get all kinds of stuff. And if I want something, she don't go to get it. She just texts like she's doing right now. She should be listening instead of texting. But anyway, <laughs> you're getting something you want. That's all right. I understand. <laughs> That's all right. Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. Okay. Watch this. Your blessings are often tied to what you want and what you're willing to declare. What are you willing to declare? And never take it back because of pressure. Write this down. I don't know limits you in life. I don't know limits you in life and causes you to live in lack. When you don't know, it will cause you to live in lack. I don't know. Put quotations on that statement. Limits you in life and causes you to live in lack. Let me finish it. Not knowing will cause a delay in your blessing. It will cause a delay in your blessing. You see what I'm saying? When you don't know. If you don't know the woman you're going to marry, ain't no, you're liable to marry a cow. I've had some people say, you know, I'm in my number. Lord, send me someone. Man, get specific. You don't want somebody like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, put some, put, put a, little, a little, pretty is a good word. <laughs> and 
And beauty is only skin deep. So what you may think is ugly, someone may think is beautiful. You see what I'm saying? Let me say it again. I don't know. Limits you in life and causes you to live in lack. Not knowing will cause a delay in your blessings. Want a scripture? 2 Timothy 1 verse 12. Put that up on S. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. Put it up on the screen. Because I can quote it for I know, but I, I want you to see it. I want you to believe it because God says, see, I, if I quote it, I'm saying it. If God, if you read it, God, uh, 2 Timothy, and I'll keep going, go to the next verse. Got that there? For, yeah, there, right there. For I know whom I have believed. Now, don't look at me. Look at the screen. Believe, duh, D, past tense. For I know, not believing. I'm, not, I'm trying to, I know whom I have believed, duh, past tense, and am persuaded. Now you went another level. That he is able to keep that which I, keep going, go to the next verse, have committed unto him against that day. What have I committed? What shall I do for thee? For I know in whom I have believed, and I'm persuaded. You can't change my mind. I know. I'm not believing. I know. So when something tries to attach itself to my body, I go, whoa, stop. I know that this body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. Or if something tries to depress me in my mind, oh, that's not my thoughts. For I know I have committed my spirit, my soul, and my body. You are an outlaw spirit trespassing on something. Read the sign. No trespassing. You see what I'm saying? Let me say that, that, that point again. I, I, I don't know limits you in life and cause you to live in lack. Not knowing will cause a delay in your blessing. You know why some people are so mad at me about the house I live in, the car I drive, the jet I fly? Because they don't know they can have it too. Why would God love me anymore and love you? I ain't smarter than you are. And I use the word ain't. I could have used proper English. I, I just childlike. Jesse, what shall I do for thee? A house, car. Jet. Oh, look at some people. <laughs> well, just turn around and I'll pet your fur back down. You see, you love my house. You don't like yours. That's why you mad at me. Well, I don't think you ought to have that. No, you love my house. You don't like yours. That's your problem. And for people that don't like it, how come everybody wants to visit it? How come everybody wants to go inside of it? I thought you didn't like it. I don't like curry. The food, cur I, don't, I don't like the way it smells. It smells like underarm body odor. Now, that's just me. You may love it. Don't burp around me if you're eating that stuff. I promise you, I will never seek it out. One of the presidents, George H.W. Bush, hated broccoli. And the broccoli growers of America got mad at him. He has a right not to like something. Oh, they got mad. But they didn't, he didn't go say, well, I'll just eat a plate of broccoli to help you. No. Yeah, but broccoli is very, very healthy for you. It also gives you gas. That's all I'm going to say about that. I ain't going any further than that right there. How do you know you're going to have it? Persistency. Write this down. Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. It's like a child. I have a cookie. No, no, you can't. That's going that's to ruin your supper. And I got a cookie. And then, ma, 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 ma. After a while, you get so mad, you give them the jar. Here. That's the floodgates. 
That's why grandparents are so wonderful to grandkids. We open up the floodgates. We don't care. Why? Because they're not sleeping at our house. We send them home with a sugar high. It's called payback. How many grandparents know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So bless that God. Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. So I'm very persistent about what shall I do for the, I, he tell, I tell him. And it make people mad. Well, excuse me, he ain't asking you, he's asking me. You may want something different. I don't have a problem with that. That's your business. Is that what you want? When we go out and eat a lot, uh, Kevin and Kathy said, I mean, Kathy, we go out and eat a lot. Kevin likes certain things. He always ordered, me too. Well, he used to order the same thing. Like if he orders soup, he's going to say this, I want some extra broccoli and white onions. And I see that sometimes I look at the way that they go, white onions. I wonder if the guy goes and says, we don't quite have white onions. We've got kind of brown onions. But you know, that's what he wants. Guess what he gets? He gets it. Sometimes I order stuff. Kathy said, I don't like that. I said, okay, you didn't order it. Sometimes she'll put a dress on or something. I don't like it. Oh, she get mad about that. I'm sorry. I don't like it. Well, you should like it. You don't have no taste. Now, don't get nasty. <laughs> don't get nasty. I don't like that tie you're wearing with that well. Don't look. <laughs> but I don't think it fits. I don't care. It's out of style. I don't care. It, that's not hard, ladies and gentlemen. I just got something on I wanted. Hmm. The other day I put on, I'm going to wear it one Sunday. Oh, I look good, said I love it. Kathy go, oh, Lord, you look like a Las Vegas entertainer. I said, I used to be one, mama. <laughs> My God, you look at you on, on the stage. Well, what's wrong with that? Yeah, but you know, you, you got a dignified look. Jesse, you got white hair. You, you know, you're supposed to, you know, dark colors. I like dark colors, but I like other colors. Wait, I, got, I bought me some jackets that you're going to have to put sunglasses on to watch me. <laughs> and if you don't like them, that's okay. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Persistency in asking never fails to open the floodgates of God's power to you. Now, I'm going to give you another point, and I want you to write this down. It's very, very important. See, this is the theme. I'm setting this thing. Are you thinking about what shall I do for thee? Are you putting it in your mind, spirit, phys physically, and financially? Don't let fear of choosing make you choose nothing. Don't let fear of choosing make you choose nothing. And you'll gripe about it all day long, all year long. I don't know why they got that. Well, you didn't choose. I don't look like I'm ever going to get married. Let me help you. Choose. If you're waiting for somebody perfect, it ain't going to happen. See, Grace saw Jonathan, and she had to choose. And he's a New York boy. He's always sticking his chest out. But it worked out good, didn't it, Grace? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Choose. You're not going to find everything perfect. Because you see, a date really, you don't really know what that girl looks like. You just think you do. She's covered up with makeup. Wait till you see her without the makeup, without the eyelashes, without the eyebrows, without the lips red or pink or, or gloss. You know, what they call that? She's shining. And she comes out, you go, oh, what happened? In an old house coat, scratching herself. <laughs> and she looks at it and goes, I'm ready. Uh, I'm not. Uh. <laughs> what happened? What happened? <laughs> Look at the men. Boy, have we experienced that. 
Don't, don't let fear of choosing make you choose nothing. So many people do that. And God is saying it. He's been saying it since he created us. What shall I do for thee? Write this down. I don't know is sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. That's why people are not blessed, spiritually, physically, and fine. Aren't you glad you came this morning? Listen to me. I'm, I'm, setting, I'm setting the agenda for your life. I don't know. It's sometimes an excuse. I told you before, it limits you, but it's an excuse to just stay where you are. Let me help you. Pick and stick. Pick it and stick to it. Pick, stick. Most people that buy a house is not looking for what they need. They're looking for what they want. So pick and stick. Let me say it again. I don't know it's sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. Pick and stick. Put up Psalms 84, verse 11. Put that up, up there, boys, if you don't mind. I, 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 normally I just quote it, but then I got it there. But I, when you read it, it's God speaking to you. Psalms 84, you got it up there, boys? Psalms chapter 84, that'll help you out. Verse 11, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. Watch this. The Lord will give grace and glory. Watch this now. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I don't know if sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are, pick and stick, man. God's saying, here, my warehouses are full, spiritual, physical, financial. Let me give you a double portion of the anointing. You want miracles in your ministry? I'll give it to you. You want healing in your ministry? You want, you want the gift of discerning of spirits? I'll give that to you. You want the nine fruits, the fullness of the Godhead body? You want the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Do you want to own everything? I'll give it to you. Just ask. Pick and stick. I picked Kathy and I stuck to her. She picked me, she stuck to me. I've changed since she's married me. Yeah, she heard her say that. Yeah, she has. She has too. So what? That's called life. Well, she's not as pretty as she used to be. Well, look at the pictures. Go get the picture. You ain't a good looking. You ain't as good as you were too. We all started. Look at all these men with no hair. They started out with hair. Nothing wrong with being bald. Actually, it's more, it's fashionable. People that have a full head of hair, cut their hair off and just shave it. That's fine if that's what you want. I mean, hey, I don't care. Pick and stick. I like that. I wish I could say I thought of that, but that's my daughter Jody's statement. Pick and stick. I said, Jody, I, 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 I got to use that. Oh, Jesus. Let me say it again. I don't know if sometimes an excuse to just stay where you are. But Psalms 84, verse 11. Put that back up there, Psalms 84, verse 11. For the Lord God is a sun. I mean, he's bright and a shield. I mean, now that's protection. The Lord will give grace. That's and glory. Good God, man. That the glory is the money and the grace is the ability to spend it. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. I'm trying, Brother Jesse. But the problem is you're not doing the next. You, you, you actually, let me just give you the next point, then you'll, I'll answer it. Don't let critical people steal your joy or sideline your faith. Don't let critical people steal your joy and sideline your faith. People will do that. I'm not going to let them sideline me. And they'll say, well, who you think you are? Well, sit down. Let's, I, I have, I'm going to tell you who I am. I hope you have a lot of time because I'm a lot of stuff. Because I am that I am. Christ in me, the hope of glory. So now I got to explain to you God all. I got to explain to you God and all his wonderfulness even before I get to me because he's in me first. You see what I'm saying? So don't let critical people steal your joy or sideline your faith. 
But Jesse, how, how do you make it work? You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. Write that down. You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. Remember this, God will overrule their objections. He'll overrule. You know, judges do that all the time. Overrule. I object. Overrule. Uh, uh, we said this the other day, but it's so funny. We were out eating, and uh, this is before all this technology came in. <laughs> I wanted to go to Wall Street. And I have a friend of mine named Dan and Ann Stratton. Dan, it was a, he, was, he, he, he worked in the pits, the oil pits, where they uh, buy and sell uh, oil, trading. He was a trader. He said, he said Jesse, you want to go? And this is many, many years ago. I said, yeah, well, Jerry Savelle was with us. So, you know, I thought, well, you know, these guys dress up. So we, so we dressed up pretty nice, you know, when we were walking. And, 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 and we, we, had a, we had a right to be there because we were with Dan, who's a trader. He was trading in the pits, trading oil. I like to watch it now. And you, you, there was an old movie called Trading Places. Anybody ever seen that? That's the funniest thing. Ever. Uh, who is that with uh, Dan Aykroyd and uh, yeah, Ernie Murphy? And, I mean, you, you see them guys drinking Maalox, uh, screaming, I mean, people flying there. And you see them in there. Drink. They got ulcers. That's true. Now, now they don't do that now. Now they do everything through technology, just pressing buttons. So we go. Now, you got to have a name tag. So we had a guest, but the guy didn't see it. There was a guy. Let me show you how the devil knew that me and Jerry Savelle were there because we are full of the anointing of God, and we are very blessed people. And all the money Satan has belongs to me, Amen. belongs to you. He's a thief. So he gets nervous. There was a guy there, and I mean, they screaming and hollering, and I mean, doing all that kind of, and, and I'm watching, I'm thinking, wow, man, these guys, they, they gonna need prayer. They, I'm, I'm t Gary, I'm telling you, Gary, I mean, you can hear them, eh, 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 just, just screaming and hollering. All of a sudden, we hear this clear voice, Satan objects, Satan objects, Satan objects, and it kind of shut down. That's what we said, wow, wow, wow. and there was a guy, his name tag was Satan. He said, who are those two men? See, that devil knew we were there. See, that is the financial center of the world. This, you see what I'm saying? Satan objects because now he's scared. We got two guys that know how to get it out of his hand seven times and get his furniture and his house. He went to screaming. We looked around. And Satan objects. Me and Jerry said, ooh, we got the devil mad. I said, Jerry? That devil, no, we're here. Who are these men? Move them up. Get them out. See, scared. Why? Because we have an awakened our conscious. We have awakened our conscious to know what is ours. See, for you to understand this thing, what shall I do for thee? You have to awaken your conscious to know what is yours. You see what I'm saying? Let me say it again. You must awaken your conscience to believe above people's objections. God will overrule their objections. People object to me having a home. They object to me this and that. They always object in something. God just overrules it. You can't have that. Well, Jesus said I could. Now, either you lying or God lying, I pick you. Because God's not man that he can. Don't complicate this. You see what I'm saying? Write this down. God always gives in overflowing. Why? Because one of his names is more than enough. El Shaddai, more than enough. Why are you just asking for enough? Because you think you're being humble. Let me help you. Don't get mad at me. You're being stupid. And you think and the church is allowing it to happen. And you're struggling with something you don't need to struggle at all, spiritual, physical, or financial. I'm just telling you what God said. God always gives an overflowing. Don't cap off the goodness of God with limited thinking. Don't cap off the goodness of God with limited thinking, limited faith, or limited words. If you want to understand what shall I do for thee, get away from limited thinking, limited <laughs> faith, and limited words. Well, you know, faith doesn't work like that because your faith is limited. Mine's unlimited. Uh-huh, you think you're. What Hebrews 11 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. 
If God was, oh, I'm sure quick, thank you, Holy Ghost. If God was still writing Hebrews 11, my name would be in there, Kevin. What do I say of Samson and Barak and Abraham, Moses? Your name would be in there, Kevin. Our name would be in there if he was still writing Hebrews 11. Your name would be in there. You notice I've never stopped believing for Covenant Church to be debt free. Why? I will not limit myself to that. I don't care how long. Who don't want it yesterday? Everybody wants it yesterday. Common sense. But that doesn't make any difference. Do you know if you do diet, you will lose weight? It may take longer than you like, but son, you're going down. You are going to lose that weight. It's going to happen. But you can't do it eating a donut and drinking skim milk. Because it's less calorie. <laughs> that don't work. God always gives an overflowing. Don't cap off the goodness of God with limited thinking, limited faith, or limited words. One time I went to a, a, a jewelry store and I was with Kathy. And um, it was my birthday and she wanted to buy me something. Now, Kathy, you got to understand something about Kathy. If she buys something, she just expects me to buy something too. I said, you don't have to get in bondage to your blessing. I don't have to buy something because you bought something. Oh, no, no, I won't get No, no, I know what she's trying to do. No, I mean, if I want something, I'll get it. That's not the issue. But there's a lot of times I go to stores that I don't see anything I want. I don't think I've been to a store that Kathy didn't see something she liked. I didn't say she wanted it, but she liked it. That's fine. Well, it's my birthday. Okay, so she wants to get me something. Well, Gary, I didn't see anything I like. Oh, I'll tell you where it was. Oak went hard. Jewelry store here in Metairie. Oh, and they got some beautiful things in there. If you want to see a nice uh, jewelry store, I I'll give old Tommy a plug. You go check it out. It's nice. Now watch this. So I'm looking around. We normally have a guy that waits on us all the time and things of that nature. Ken's his name. He's a wonderful man. <laughs> I can't see anything I want, Riggy. I said, he said, you don't see anything, uh, Reverend? I said, no, I, I don't see anything. And Kathy says this. Well, I see something I like. And the guy made a mistake. He said, but it's his, it's his birthday. It, what did you say? Wait, wait, don't say it. Say it on the microphone. She tells this guy this. Share the love. <laughs> <laughs> just share the love, baby. He go, oh, yeah. In other words, he just dawned on him. If you don't shut up, you're not going to make any money today. Just share the love, man. I know it's his birthday. Share the love. So I got something, Kathy. Got something for Kathy on my birthday. What's wrong with that? What was he doing? Satan objects. No, it's got to be this way. No, he's not Satan by no man. But if he, why would you accept that? It don't have to be your birthday. It don't have to be a special day for you to get something. What you want, babe? I, oh, she said the reason why you didn't get nothing because you didn't know. <laughs> that may be true. I didn't know what I wanted. So I didn't get nothing. I don't think I missed God on it. I just didn't want nothing. But there's times when I want something. And I'm not constantly wanting something. <laughs> I'll take a billion dollars for this ministry. I can burn. If someone, when we receive the offering after this service, if someone put six billion $364 million and change in an orphan bag. Or maybe you out there watching. Let me show you how absurd it sounds. This is Sunday at the time of this preaching. It would be in the works and gone by Friday. You don't think I got some projects? But I know what people are thinking. Look at his hair. How long is he going to live? <laughs> it has nothing to do with how long I'm going to live. It has all to do with your obedience. Oh, I don't want to say that. Say, say, God's been speaking to some of you to be a part of it. You hadn't done it yet? So stay with your broke self. <laughs> oh, that's hard. I know it's hard. I thought it was hard. I told God that's hard. He said, no, I'm trying to get him some money. 
I'm sending a man like you that got the anointing of increase on your ministry, on your person, and they won't see it. Maybe if I let them see some of the things you wear, they might not have enough guts to ask me. Now, somebody's going to get mad about that, but that's all right. See, God just trying to help you. I mean, Jesus saw a boatload of fish, and everybody was quitting going to the house, just cashing that on the other side. Oh, yeah, we, 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 we fished all night. We taking nothing beside mama waiting on me, man. Cast your net on the other side, idiot. And you know the story. Write this down. Don't let your destiny in receiving pass you by. It can pass you by. Opportunity, you're waiting for a good opportunity and you miss the one that's right there in front of you. Don't let your destiny in receiving pass you by. You see what I'm saying? Because if you do, it's limited thinking, limited faith, and limited words. God's got a destiny and destination for you. Listen, if you miss this theme, you will miss your opportunity. And you'll never really reach your true destiny or your true destination. I'm telling you, I know what I'm talking about. Not only have I confessed it, I've possessed it. I had one of the greatest years of my ministry in 2020, and everybody's screaming and howling, going nuts. I just sat back, and the tsunami of blessing begin to flow spiritually physically financially I just went to a cardiologist he checked me said you know you never had a heart attack like as if I didn't know that <laughs> okay man you're in good shape for a man your age thank you I mean I went to the dentist with Kathy just because she had to get a tooth fix or something I'm sitting and this man walked up to me and said what did you used to do for a living Well, I ain't finished yet. <laughs> he thinks he's got to be retired. Let me tell you what I tell myself. I noticed myself yesterday. I was walking down one of the halls of my house. I was walking like this. I said, walk straight. You remember, have you ever had a teacher in school say, sit up straight? <laughs> not, not you, Kevin. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kevin said, what'd you say? <laughs> No, have you ever had anybody? Your posture's not good. Remember that? Sit up straight. I told myself, walk straight. I was slouching in walking. I said, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, you have to take care of this thing. You have to tell it what to do. See, I don't want you to miss your destiny, much less your destination. So when you understand that, then we'll get to this. You must have fixed thoughts. God, that's good. God. You must have fixed thoughts on who God is and what he said you can have. Well, what did he, let me give you an example. Abraham, you got to have fixed thoughts on who God is and what he said you can have. God told Abraham, That him and Sarah are going to have a baby. Now, he's almost, a, well, he's 100, she's 90. Now, you know that don't make no sense. You may want to in your mind, but your body ain't working. If you don't believe that, go to the old folks' homes. So what? Well, watch this. He had fixed thoughts. He wasn't limited in words. He wasn't limited in thinking, and he wasn't limited in faith. Romans 4, I think 17, 18, and 19 he said he considered not his body. That's a man with intellect. He knows what he can't do, but God said he could do. But so he didn't consider, I didn't consider the COVID. I didn't deny it. I just looked at the evidence of it that 99.9% .9 of the people recover. But they keep focusing on it. Now, I don't want nobody to die. Don't misunderstand me. But have you found any politician done something right yet? Has the CDC and all these different regulations, have they, 
They said it's supposed to flatten the curve, get rid of it. And all of a sudden, she's spiking again. Everybody's still wearing the mask. Everybody says, they don't know. The devil don't want anybody to hear that. You see my point? I didn't deny it. I just didn't consider it. Abraham said, I consider not my body. I'm paraphrasing it. I staggered not at the promise. Now, I'm fully persuaded. That's, <laughs> he don't have limited thinking, limited words, or limited faith. Now, I'm going to shock you. He wasn't even saved. <clears throat> Not like you are. The anointing God was on him, not in him. No one got born again to Jesus, breathed on him to receive the Holy Spirit. Amen. But he, he pushed all his sin ahead. That's why they had that scapegoat, sent it out into the desert for salvation so that grace would come and you'd be blessed. Do you see that? Now, why? Oh, and he was very rich. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Very rich. Why is it? Well, that's spiritual. No, that, that's cows. That's physical cow, cattle, silver, gold. This is gold. That's gold. You, that's not metaphors. If that is, that's a very expensive metaphor. That's not metaphors. Some of y'all don't even know what a metaphor is. Ask the person next to you, and if they don't know, go all the way down the pew until you find someone who knows what a metaphor is. <laughs> you see, you understand that? See, he had fixed thoughts. On what, he knew what God could do. Not at the beginning, not when he was 75. Because then he could still make a baby. Hmm. <laughs> Look at some of these men, 75. Okay. Look at the women. Yo, mama, ain't that. <laughs> Not only can God do what you ask, believe he will do what you ask. Not only can God do what you ask, believe he will do what you ask. Brother Jesse, <laughs> how do I get this? I want it now. Can you give me one statement? Yeah. Here's a point. Make the word a habit. You made church a habit, but not the word. There are a lot of people in church today. They don't know nothing what the word of God says because they never made it a habit. Make the word a habit and you will know it's his will to do what you ask. You make the word happen, you will know, you will know it that he will do what you ask. Why? Second Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself, a, you study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I'm not trying to convince God here. You got to convince yourself. Study. Make the word of God a habit. Then but that devil tries to throw a thought. Well, that's agreed. Shut up, man. That's not my thoughts. The word God says I had. He said, what things soever you desire. <laughs> when you pray. He says, the Lord's my shepherd. That means you're being guided by someone bigger than you are. I shall not want but you're not going to have any rest. He's making me to lie down on green pastures. He's giving me peace, so I have peace about it. He's giving me rest, so instead of waiting for it to rest, uh, enter into me, I enter into it. Do you see? I'm your Elisha today. Do you understand what God is saying here? It's amazing. I do have a plane, and it's a very nice one. Believe in God for more. 
well, my God, if Delta can have a fleet, why can't we? Maybe I'd like to fly you for free. Oh, look at you. Oh, 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 that could never happen. Well, if I had a 747, it could. They make it. I mean, they're out there. Some of them are pretty cheap right now. Aviation, there's a, there are a lot of planes out there, but I mean, it's a good time to buy a plane, my God, man. But wouldn't that be nice? Like if I'd go to um, Africa. Well, I ain't got the kind of money to go that way. You don't need no money. Just get on a plane and go. Mary used to be a flight attendant. She'll serve you. You know how to do that. Roy will sell the tapes on the plane. He knows how to do that. Ken and Eli will fly the plane. I'll preach to you. Kathy will make sure there's Wi-Fi there so you can online shop. <laughs> That's not a shot. That's desire, want, just blessing, whatever. See, you didn't think that. And if you think that'll break God, you're living in a dream world. You see, he will and can, spiritually, physically, and financially. Listen, you'll know if you miss it. Can I be honest? There have been a lot of prophets missing this thing, all this stuff. They prophesy, they're competing on prophecy. Their prophecies have become sermons. Just say it, the Lord. <laughs> I've heard the Lord prophesy. It's pretty quick. Do it. Believe it. Receive it. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, I'm not being critical here. I saw one, Kathy showed me something. Was it yesterday, Kathy? There's some black gentleman who's a prophet. He got up and apologized. He said he missed. I, I, that's, that's, you very seldom hear that. I missed it. Remember, I don't know his name. Uh, I mean, but I was very kind of him. Well, let me just say this yet. The fat lady ain't sung yet. Amen. Nothing's over. You know what you need to do with that t television? I'm going to show you. This is a clicker. <laughs> well, what's going to happen if Biden and Kamala or Kamala, I don't know how she say her name. She real funny about how you spell her name or say her name. That's fine. What will you do? I'll call him Mr. President. If I meet the Secretary of State, I'll call him Mr. Secretary. If I meet a previous president, Mr. President. He was not the president, but he once was. That's why Michael didn't bring a railing accusation against Satan. He simply said, the Lord rebuked thee. Why? Because he once was an anointed cherub that covereth, who walked in the stones of fire. And because he once held that, he said, I bring no real accusation against you. You held a very high office, but the Lord rebuked thee. Pretty simple, isn't it? Now, you can say what you want. Everybody, all, we all got our favorites. Who was your favorite president in your life? Ronald Reagan. I just like, you know, he'd go, well. <laughs> kind of shake a little bit, well. I liked him. You know who was the smartest one? Jimmy Carter. Nuclear physicist. Weak. Ah, oh, the best ex-president you've ever seen. Jimmy Carter. He did greater work as an ex-president than any one of them. See him out there with ham and nails. He's in his 90s still teaching a Sunday school class. They told him he had brain cancer. I don't want to teach. I want to just preach the word of God. God touched his body. Healed him. I guess he's been studying the word. He's made the word of God a habit. Who had the highest IQ? The highest IQ of any president was John Quincy Adams. Only had one term. You know who's right behind him? Bill Clinton. But not when it comes to women. Tell the truth. Brilliant. <laughs> you know 
You know who was real smart? Theodore Roosevelt. But all of them were president. President Chester Arthur. Who is that? Once a president. Thomas Jefferson, very close. And yet he got shut down. He wrote that wonderful Declaration of Independence. That all men are created equal. But he didn't think black people were people. But then he falls in love with a slave. That changed his mind. That must have been one pretty black girl. Can't change the past, ladies and gentlemen. But you definitely can change the present and the future. Well, let me close. What do you think about interracial marriage? I don't. I don't think about it at all. I just ask people, do you love this girl? Do, do you love this man? I mean, I see it all over the scripture. Moses married a black woman. Miriam mad as a hornet. I just, I tell you what. And she spoke against Moses. And you know what God said? Okay, Miriam, you want to be white? I'm going to make you real white, Miriam. And he struck her with leprosy. She will look like Casper the friendly ghost. <laughs> then she had to ask the God that she spoke against to pray for her to get that off of her. You may have spoken against me. You might be careful because I may be the person I have to pray for you to get that junk off of you. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes you just don't want to receive a seed or a blessing because you're trying to be nice. No, I'll use Richie Pichon. That's really a strange name, Pichon. Now, if you spell it, it's pigeon. The man flies every way he goes, but it's Pichon. He come fix my window the other day. Came over there with a router. I didn't even know what a router was. He said, let me show you what a router is. I said, oh, yeah, okay. Still didn't get it. He opened up this toolbox. He got more tools and everything in there. You just fix anything. I said, Richie, how much I owe you? He said, I'll put it in the mailbox. He said, you go stand by your mailbox and you, you, you'll find out. Richie, I don't have a mailbox. <laughs> no, 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 Richie, listen to me. Listen, I, I, I want to pay you for doing this. He said, I, I'll put it in the mailbox. Let's go stand by the mailbox. How many times do you got to say that? <laughs> I said, how many times do I got to say, Richie, we don't have no mailbox. <laughs> and I heard this little slight statement from the Lord. Receive. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. Got in his truck. Go on. I'd have paid him whatever he wanted. Now look at him. Ooh. <laughs> look at Tammy. Ooh. <laughs> it didn't make any difference, you see. Yeah. He just made up his mind he's going to be a blessing that day. That's it. Now, I'll switch the story. When he was building my house, he'd hand me a bill. I said, give me the bill. And I would immediately call or I'd go to my office and I'd give it back. He'd go, oh, Jesse, I ain't even got home yet. I don't know, you paid me in the last, it took, what, 15 minutes or 10 minutes? You went to, sometime I paid him too quick, he forgot. He put the check on top and, and his truck and left it there. Because <laughs> they're not used to it. They're used to saying, when you're going to pay me, you big idiot. When you're going to, you know what I'm saying? But no. Why? It was his money. Why do I want to hold your money? Why are you letting the devil hold your money? He ain't holding mine. No. And I know, I know a blessing. Even when I'm not, I can be a far away from a distant. I can be not even in the same place. And all of a sudden, God will quicken me. And I'm sitting there last night in my house, and the Lord said, Gary. Gary is one of the KCM security people. Phenomenal. I've been knowing Gary for a long, long time. Him and his wonderful wife. 
First met him in Minneapolis. I think he used to sell Mercedes. Am I correct? I think so. Okay, watch this. Get, get, I said, Gary. Yeah, Gary and his wife's coming. Gary. Now I'm at my house. I call Mary. This is the first time Mary never called me back fast. Because it's a different number. I got several numbers. I don't know what they are, but I got them. They just gave me a new phone system. This thing's crazy. We got to learn it. Victor, you got you to teach me and Kathy this system. Because it's all computer. Finally, we got it. And uh, uh, did you text Mary? Yeah, yeah you text. Finally got it. So Mary called back because it's a different number. She goes, uh, Miss Kelly, you come? Yeah, uh, boss, Jesse wants to talk to you. Now, I don't know. I said, where are you? I said, Mary, where are you? She said, uh, me and Roy, we've taken out Gary and his wonderful wife out to dinner. Where y'all at? Drago's. I said, uh, I'm buying the meal. I didn't know they were there. I could have missed that opportunity, but I wasn't there. Didn't, didn't need to be there. I sent the word to them ostriches, go. <laughs> and I told them, I said, get another dozen. Get two or three dozen. I don't care. My Lord. I said, I'm buying the meal. Am I right? And y'all took care of that. Is that correct? All right. Why? Why? You don't have to be there. To be a blessing. And you may think God is not around you, but he is. But if you don't see him, you don't have to not see. So what if you don't see him? He still can be a blessing to you. So what shall I do for thee? Ladies and gentlemen, you're going to be thinking a lot today. Now, I went over this pretty fast. There's a lot of material here. I want you to... Once again, get on my pardon the thing if you can, and you'll get each letter. And there'll be different things in it every month in a different manner. Because I, can't, I don't have the time. You would be here tonight. It's 1135 right now. You'd be here tonight at 1135 if I kept going. There's so much there. And some of you wouldn't mind, but a lot of you would. Your children would go slap crazy for sure, you know. So never be afraid. Of what people say, don't let them sideline you. He'll got to overrule their objections. Uh, don't be afraid to choose or use that excuse not to choose. Spiritual, physical, financial, all three if you want. Oh, should I say it, Lord? Yeah, if you want to be rich, he'll make you rich. Let me help you. It ain't going to make you happy. It'll make you comfortable while you're miserable. You won't have to worry about the utility bill. I don't have to be concerned about these utility bills. Them big 5K right now, if you went out there to that meter, she's spinning, boy. This, this utility bill is in the thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands every month to run this place. Never missed a payment. Not concerned about it. Because my God. And I'm going to just end it like this. Supplies. I'm Jesse Duplantis, and I approve this message. Give the Lord a hand clap for that.